Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship here at uh, Lakeside on this uh, Memorial Day weekend. We give God thanks for the opportunity to gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we come together uh, to give thanks to God for the many blessings in our lives. And we also come with those burdens that weigh us down. Trusting that Christ has promised to be with us where two or three are gathered so that we may leave this place with a joy in our heart and a bounce in our step and ready to serve God in all that we do. Uh, just a couple announcements this morning. Uh, remember that next Sunday is June, right? And it's a great month because some wonderful birthdays in June. And, uh, but more than that, now remember, what time is service in June? Nine o'clock, right? We switch from 10 o'clock to 9 for June, July, and August. That's uh, whenever you want to come, Doug, morning or evening, but uh, I'm going to be here in the morning. Uh, uh, also, that uh, next Sunday we will be celebrating uh, Holy Communion uh, for the first time since we've opened up our doors again. Uh, so we look forward uh, to that as well. With our Wednesday evening worship, we'll continue to be at 7 o'clock throughout the summer. We will be moving down uh, to the outdoor worship area. And so uh, we look forward to that as well. Let's see. There was a... Oh, I know what it was. Memorial Day uh, services at the cemeteries tomorrow. Uh, 9 o'clock is up at Webb Lake and uh, 10 o'clock will be here at Sacred Hearts, 11 o'clock at Jackson, and then you'll have to look at the bulletin to see if you want to go further. I believe there's at least two or three more in the, in the afternoon. But uh, a special thanks to all of our veterans and uh, to those who are uh, making that day special, uh, and also remembering why we have Memorial Day. And it's for those who, uh, who lost their lives serving for this country. And so we continue to give thanks for uh, our amazing freedom. It's not that the, we don't have challenges in this country, uh, but we are a country that continues to be a young country. We are a work in progress. And we continue to work forward to the day when that we have freedom and justice, equality for all people. And we will continue to work on God's behalf for that. So at this time, uh, I am going to invite uh, Jolene Peterson. It's been a while, can I do it? Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> and I'll let you take over. Good morning. Can't, can't talk with this thing on. I just wanted to remind everyone that quilting has started up again. On Tuesday mornings, I actually quilted a week ago. I went home, my Fitbit said I swam for two hours. <laughs> so anyone can do it if I can do it. Everyone's welcome to join us on Tuesday morning. Um, there is a very special group of ladies who've been working individually during COVID and now they've come back together. And they're trying to meet their goal of 250 quilts for Lutheran World Relief by October. Um, I'd like to mention each of those ladies, but Pastor Bill won't allow me that much time. You know who you are. We got some great quilters in the group. In March of 2020, they made over 400 face masks to distribute in the community. In October, 204 quilts were sent to Lutheran World Relief. In December, because the boys couldn't go home from Northwest Passage, the girls got together and made 26 quilts, so every boy got one. Since no one person can do this alone, we would like to recognize our leader, Don Straub, and that's not why she's sitting here. <laughs> This is a surprise. We have a pin for you from Lutheran World Relief for guiding us in taking control and blanketing the world with love and for giving help and comfort to our neighbors with the very least when they need it the most. So thank you, Don. We have a pin for you.
Delta da. No, that's a. Uh, <laughs> Julie, please prepare us with the prelude. Let us please stand as you are able and let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives us for all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and known things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. May be seated as we sing our gathering song, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. your impassioned response to the hungry and the poor, that we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie every day for peace in our hearts for peace in our homes for friends and family for life and for love for our work and our play let us pray to the Lord let us pray to the Lord Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, let us pray our prayer of the day. Almighty creator and ever living Lord, we worship your glory eternal three in one, and we praise your power majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For sharing uh, the peace this morning, this is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and one of the things is, of course, we know uh, why we have the weekend, but it is also a time uh, when families come together. I think it's especially uh, wonderful this year because of we weren't able to do it in, in last year. And so one of the things I hope you've all had the opportunity to uh, uh, to get out on uh, these beautiful lakes and uh, I had the experience the other night that I have a nice little six horsepower Evinrude motor that I had overhauled $250 I put into it and the guy asked me why I was doing that <laughs> and I'm getting to the point because the other the first time out was the other night and it wouldn't start 
And uh, you'll be glad to know that I didn't even, I didn't even mention God in the conversation. <laughs> when, uh, but what we did do is, thank goodness, there was a, a set of oars, and I believe that the good Lord knew that I needed some exercise. And uh, I actually had two gentlemen come up with boats and say, can we tow you? And I said, and I looked at Rhonda, I go, do I look that out of shape? You know, uh, but for sharing this piece this morning, let us roll. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. <laughs> Well, good morning, and thank you for this. I know, Jolene, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a lot of ladies involved in this, and I accept this for all of you because I know it's my passion and the talent God's given me, but I tend to need all of you to help with that, too. So I thank everyone. Um, this morning, our first reading is from Isaiah. This reading narrates Isaiah's vision of the Lord surrounded by angels. They sing, Holy, 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 a song the church sings at the beginning of the great Thanksgiving. The liturgical text invites the church and all cre cre uh, creation to sing in praise of God's glory. That glory is God's mercy towards sinners. Our first reading is Isaiah 6, and we'll start with verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I'm lost, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Our psalm this morning is 29, and we'll um, read it responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name. Worship the Lord and be The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedar of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon sick like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and, stripes, and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Our second reading uh, is from Romans. In describing the new life of faith, Paul refers to all three persons of the Trinity. The Spirit leads us to recognize that we are children of God and Father and sisters and brothers with Christ the Son. Romans 8, and we'll start with verse 12. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the debts of the body, you will live.
For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus' miracles prompt Nicodemus to visit him in secrecy. And Jesus tells him about being born of the Spirit and about the Son who has been sent by God to save. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one who has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. You. you may be seated. Well, good morning. Good to see all of you out here this morning, and, and for those who are uh, worshiping at, at home, it's good that uh, you are with us as well. And this is in our church here. Uh, last Sunday was Pentecost, which we celebrate uh, the giving of the Holy Spirit to us. And then the Sunday that always follows is known as Trinity Sunday, and it is one of... Uh, uh, typically uh, that 
it really causes pastors to pull at their hair because how can we ever fully understand the Trinity? And the answer is, we can't. But I did bring along something that maybe can help us out a little bit this morning. Is This is it's a tripod, right? And I have always used it as in for my hunting, as this is because as I've grown older, I'm not quite as steady as I used to be. And one of the things is I always want to make a clean and ethical uh, shot if I can. And so I have gone to using a tripod. And it's sort of nice because it, when I get it all out there, it's steady. It is, I mean, takes a lot of the, the movement away. And of course it has how many legs? Three. Now, there are those that you can use it as a bipod, right? And it's good. I mean, if it has just the two legs and now you have to hang on with one hand because otherwise it'll just fall over. And also you can use it as just a shooting stick. But once again, every time you do that, it's not near as steady. And so I sort of think about Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Because it is just three sticks, but it makes one tripod. And when I think of the Holy Trinity, I think of the strength in that relationship. The Creator, the Redeemer, and our Helper and our Guide. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We give thanks for a triune God, one that we can never fully understand, but one that calls us into a relationship with God and with one another. So let's pray this morning. Good morning, Lord. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for family, for friends, for our freedoms. Lord, help us to use our freedom to help everyone that is in need. We give thanks for birds, for flowers, for lakes, for fishing. Lord, we are blessed in so many ways. So help us every day to turn to you and say thank you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, three in one. Three in one. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Charlie, you might want to plug your ears, but you know, I have a been hunting since I've been like 12 years old and I'm going to use a tripod once again this fall but I'm trading my crossbow and my rifle in for a camera I know I know well at least that's the plan now you know when the when the leaves start changing that could that could all change again but uh, uh, you know I I, don't, I, I greatly enjoy eating venison as well, but <laughs> I have Rhonda. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. this is uh, Trinity Sunday, and so here we go. This is, this is what I'm going to do for Trinity. All right, you got this now, Doug? One plus one plus one equals one. You got it, right? Equals one. I know, you said, isn't that three? No, actually, we think about the Trinity, it is the one and three and the three and one. And now, how do I explain that? I can't, so we're moving on. That's enough of the Trinity. I want to get to the story, once again, of, of Nicodemus. And I have really come to appreciate uh, what I know of, of Nicodemus. Nicodemus is, if you go through, he's probably uh, getting towards uh, the twilight of his, of his life. 
And we know that he, if we follow it through, that he is a man of some resources, some wealth, because we'll find at the end of John that Nicodemus is going to appear with a certain Joseph of Arimathea, and he is the one who is going to supply all of the spices and the perfumes and everything else, and it's, a, it's worth a lot of money. But now, let's back up. We find that Nicodemus is one of the Pharisees, one of the religious leaders of the Jewish people. And he and the other Pharisees and the Sadducees have been listening to Jesus. And they have seen the miracles that Jesus has been performing. And they don't know exactly what to think of this Jesus. And for many of the, the religious leaders, they already begin, we got a problem here. Because he is going to put us out of work if we don't watch it. And so they begin to try to figure out a way. But Nicodemus, there, there's something where he goes, I, I truly believe that this, I don't know, but this might be the one. This Jesus might be the one we've been waiting for, the Messiah, the Son of God. And so what does he do? He sneaks out at night, under the cover of night. And he finds where Jesus is staying, and Jesus invites him in. And they sit down, and they have this amazing conversation in John 3, in which we have probably the most famous verse, and I would say two verses in the entire Bible, right? John 3, 16, and I would add 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that all who believe in him may have life now and life forever. And then what 17 follows is this. For God didn't son, send Jesus into this world to condemn the world, but what? That the world might be saved through him. Right there it is. Two verses sums up the entire Bible. But in the midst of this, it's a conversation with Nicodemus. And the reason I like Nicodemus is because he has the courage to ask questions. And so many times I think that when we think about, oh, confirmation and everything, it's all this stuff, you know, how many of you grew up with having to memorize, you know, and, and that's not, not saying that's not a, that's a good thing. But for somebody to just tell you this is what you need to believe, right? Okay. But do any of you ever have questions? Anybody ever out there have any questions about God and about life and about... I do. And the amazing thing about God is God is like, ask away. I mean, Jesus to Nicodemus. I, I can almost see the smile on his face. Going. And I think when Nicodemus leaves that evening, it's not like, whoo, I got it figured out now. It's sort of like when I left the seminary. I had more questions than when I first went. But what it had did, it, you know, it spurs to, and that's what it is. That's what faith, that's the neat thing about faith, is that we ask questions and we continue to try to learn and experience and life's experiences sort of teach us and other people's lives. And it is, it's a journey. Faith is a journey, and each and every year is like a new chapter in the book, is it not? I think about Nicodemus, he'll come up, I think it's the seventh chapter, John again. And by now, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they're getting pretty angry with Jesus. And they're trying to say, he's guilty, let's just get rid of the guy, let's put him to death. And it's Nicodemus who stands up and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, at least let's give the guy a fair trial. You know? And so we see him there. And then, as I mentioned before, where do we see him again? At the very end. At the very end of John's Gospel, there is Nicodemus, along with Joseph of Arimathea. And in truth, I believe that Nicodemus, he saw the light. And that I do believe that he became a follower of Jesus. I think about that, you know, that, uh, that song, I Saw the Light. 
And so many times we think about faith and, you know, I saw the light, I saw the light. Hank Williams, right? Hank Williams Sr. And he actually, uh, he got the inspiration for that song. I believe uh, they had played at a, a gig somewhere and they were all in the back of the Cadillac. Him and the band passed out, uh, which was quite typical. Mom was, Hank's mom was driving the, the vehicle and said, time to wake up, boys. You can see the lights of Montgomery. We're almost home. And so that was the inspiration for I Saw the Light. The life of Hank is quite tragic, actually, because uh, he died at 29 years of age. He didn't even see his 30th birthday. Alcohol, drugs, and you wonder what kind of demons were tormenting that he was using that to try to see the light, try to, in some ways, to get to the next day. And there's actually a story, and I believe it was, he was in San Diego doing a, a concert, and he came onto the stage and he was so drunk that he did like two songs, staggered off, and he had another concert coming. And so it was actually his manager and Minnie Pearl, right? Howdy! Yes. Who got him in the car and started driving him around town, getting him to drink coffee and trying to sober him up so that he could do the second show. And they began singing to him, I saw the light. And then Hank said something, it's just sad, because he said, Minnie, said, in my life, there is no light. There is nothing but darkness. And at 29 years of age, he died. And we think of so many others, right? Famous peoples, the, the John Belucci's, the Farley's, who, you know, just so much talent. And you wonder if they had been able to live their you know, what would have Hank Sr. And, and so many of the others, if they'd been able to live their full lives, what would they have been able to, to give to the rest of society? You know, I think uh, how many of you really enjoyed Clint Eastwood in his early, his cowboy movies? Yeah. You know, the very first outdoor theater, double header, okay? And the second, I was 10 years old. My brother-in-law took me to Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, the 41 Outdoor, and the first, uh, the second movie was Two Mules for Sister Sarah, right? How many, yeah. The first one, now, how they put movies together back then, I don't know. You know what it was? The Omen. Ten years old, he takes me to see The Omen, right? But then I think of, of Clint Eastwood and, and some of his work in more recently. Just been amazing. You know, Million Dollar Baby, what a great movie. Gran Torino. You know, all the, the storyline that's in that. And, and I think, I mean, he actually, tomorrow, I believe, he turns 91. 91. And still, still going. I think last night we were watching History Channel. And... Uh, you know, and along with Rhonda and my daughter Amanda and Frank Casey and, and I, was, I don't know how thrilled they were with watching History Channel, but I enjoyed the History Channel. It was the men who built America. And, and a couple of the key players, of course, were John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, and Ruthless at times, especially Rockefeller, some of his practices. And of course, you know, busting up uh, Standard Oil and but what really amazed me is their later years. Because in their earlier years, everything was what? How do, we get a, how do we get ahead? And you know what? I don't care about you, Ken, if you get in my way. You know? You mean nothing. Lois, you mean nothing. It's all about making money, and it's all about power, and they didn't get along very well. I mean, all, you, you talk about the power players of the day. As they got older, they began to appreciate one another for what they've done. And then, then in their later years, there became a contest. Do you know what the contest was? How much money they could give away. 
They became philanthropists. And John D. Rockefeller, in today's money, it is believed that he gave away to nonprofit organizations $283 billion. You know, which was still probably a small percentage of, but still, isn't that something? That in the final chapters of his life, it was no more about, about me and about how I could, but it was about what can I do for humankind? And so brothers and sisters in Christ, as part of our faith journey, you know, I don't know, but you're sitting out here today, so guess what? Your book is not yet complete. You know, you got the birth date, but the dash is still moving on. And so let us ask, let us ask the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us so that each and every day, let us wake up in the morning and go, Lord, I don't know what you got planned today. Uh, help me not to worry about the problems because I know you'll take care of that. But Lord, help me to be a blessing. Maybe in a big way, maybe in a small way, maybe just a smile. Maybe it's a hug now that we can do that again. Lord, your creation is amazing. You know, we look out these windows and and we see the trees, and, and if we opened the windows, we would hear the songs of the birds. In so many ways, in so many ways we are blessed. So help us to appreciate what you have given us. And Lord, help us to take care of this amazing creation for the generations that are here and yet to come, that all may know that you are a God of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. may remain seated and let us together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers this morning, we will begin by singing our prayer song, We Come to You for Healing, Lord. I will offer prayers and open it to all who have gathered here and in your homes and to lift your prayers either silently or aloud. And then we will close our prayers by once again singing our prayer song. Body, mind, and 
With all the people of God, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for our congregations that, guided by the Holy Spirit, they continue to find creative and meaningful ways to make disciples of all nations through teaching, service, and acts of compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, healing God, for the gift of medicine and science, which we rely on for the ongoing health and the well-being of our families, communities, and congregations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, for the summer months whose sunshine and rain nourish fields and gardens, for the workers who tend to these plants, and for the hope that comes with patience through the soil, we give thanks, O oh God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for your amazing creation. Each and every day, Lord, help us to turn and say thank you and to stop and smell the lilacs. Lord, we also give you thanks for the freedom that we have in this country and especially be with all those who have served and continue to serve, but especially on this weekend, we remember the fallen. May their memories be blessed and be with the families. And Lord, now hear the prayers of those who are gathered here on this day. Oh Lord, we lift up Mark and Barb Whiteside's sister-in-law, Ruth, we pray for Heather. Pray for those who are dealing with the, the shooting in Miami-Dade County. All these things, Lord, we commend them to you, trusting in your grace and in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Once again, for our offering, uh, rather than uh, passing the plates at this time, you may, uh, there is a basket behind uh, the baptismal font. But we give God thanks for your generous support of the ministry here throughout this community and throughout the world. And we give God thanks for all that we have comes from God. Together, let us pray our offering prayer. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing our sending song, Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.